This is the Fox 5 Red Zone Sports Show, presented by R.C. Willie, your home, your way. Welcome inside the Reb Zone. We are glad to have you with us. Kevin Bollinger alongside UNLV head football coach Tony Sanchez and a new desk for the Reb Zone. Looks like it needs a paint job, coach. I'll tell you what, it's great to have this <laughs> in studio today. Uh, congratulations on bringing the cannon back. Uh, just undescribable how exciting that was uh, on Saturday night. I tell you what, so proud of our guys, their grit. I mean, you, know, you, you get down by 23, it's real easy to fold the tents, and our guys didn't. They just kept chipping at it one play at a time, and, you know, sooner or later, you know, you're right back in the game and had a chance to win at the end, and, and, and we came through. So it was a big deal for the Rebel Nation. You got to do this in your first year at UNLV, so you know what comes next in the parading around. This is the first time the Cannon has ever been inside a TV studio, uh, but tomorrow at 11 o'clock out in the student union outside, they're going to be uh, starting the, the paint job on this thing. That's what makes it even more fun. Oh, absolutely. You know, we'll have a team meeting tomorrow at 10, and then uh, at the end of the meeting, we'll go ahead and we'll march that right through campus, take it to the student union, and uh, slap some red paint on it. It'll look a lot better once we get done painting it. It's going to look good in that new Fertitta football complex as well. Absolutely. Uh, let's get to the highlights of this one. We're going to begin with the first half. It was a rough start for the Rebels before they settled in on both sides of the ball. You've done a hell of a job the last couple of weeks of just showing up to work and getting your ass back in the fight. You have an opportunity, a four-quarter opportunity, to end it on your terms. Who's going to make a game change and play? Everybody out there has an opportunity to do it. To end it on your terms, to send your seniors out the right way, you young guys, to build for the future, to put that damn cannon in that damn new building the day we open it up. Senior night for the first recruiting class for Tony Sanchez, honored for their help in helping to change the culture of UNLV football. More importantly, the battle for the Fremont Cannon, the biggest game of the year in the state. But it was UNR who jumped out of the gate in a hurry. Ty Ganji to the back corner of the end zone to McLean Mannix, and the Wolfpack quickly jumped out to a 7-0 lead. UNLV drove in the UNR territory, but on fourth and four at the 36, Armani Rogers overthrows Brandon Presley to turn the ball over on downs. Reno took advantage, and on fourth and two, Ganji hits Cole Turner, who has a lot of daylight and a 24-yard touchdown reception that would extend the lead to 14-0. UNR got the ball back again and drove 80 yards, capped by Kelton Moore going right up the middle and rumbling 46 yards for the score. The extra point was no good, but three possessions and three touchdowns gave the Wolfpack a 20 to nothing lead. On UNLV's first play of the next drive, quarterback Max Gillum fumbles and UNR recovers at the Rebel 18. That led to a field goal by Rabiz Ahmed, and there were nerves brewing at Sam Boyd as UNLV was down 23 nothing. Cue the comeback, and it started on the next Rebel possession. Fourth and eight for UNLV at the Reno 38. Rogers flushed out of the pocket and he hits Lexington Thomas in stride and lightning bolts all the way to the end zone. That would cut the deficit to 23-7. On the first play of UNR's next possession, Ganji goes deep downfield and Jaquez Kalili comes up with the pick. UNLV would then go 72 yards in six plays. Capped by Rogers to Giovanni Paolo for the 18-yard touchdown. It was 23-14. Later in the second, Rodgers does it himself, lowering his shoulder and going in from two yards out for the touchdown. All of a sudden, it was 23-21, and we had ourselves a game. Reno would get a late field goal, but it was clear that this was going to be a 60-minute battle. Even after the disastrous start, UNLV was down only 26-21 at the break. So there's no denying, rough start on both yeah. sides of the ball, especially defensively. Reno took some shots uh, early in the game and, and connected and dug yourselves a little bit of a hole. Yeah, they did. They came out. I mean, first play of the game, they took a shot down the field and completed it. And you saw some of these passes here, and we just, you know, weren't doing a really good job in the back end. We weren't putting a lot of pressure on them. And then you saw the one, they gashed us with the big run. I thought the biggest change was um, 
us getting a stop and holding them to a field goal. When they were up 20 to nothing, we turned the ball over. I mean, that could have very easily been 27 to nothing, but you know, we were able to go ahead and hold them to a field goal and then score right after that, and we got momentum on both sides of the ball. So good for our guys for just sticking to the plan and just you know, not letting nerves get the best of them, not looking at the scoreboard, just playing each snap. There was a swing in the game, too, in the first half. Their senior safety got ejected on a targeting call, and it seemed like the offense really went from there in terms of, of opening things up for you guys and kind of spurted yourselves on those three yeah, touchdowns. He's a good player, too, and he comes down and fills well in the run. One of the things early in the game was tough sled and run in the football, but then as the game went on and on and on, we were really able to go ahead and you know and pound the ball right at him. So, I mean, it, we had a catch with it, plus you had the 15-yard, plus the players out of the game. Those were big turns in the game. Defensively, and, and let's face it, the defense has taken a lot of heat throughout this season. First quarter was a little rough, but we got to give them credit. They flipped that thing around a complete 180, and they were solid starting with that second quarter and moving forward. There's no doubt. And we know our Achilles Hill's been giving up the deep ball this year, you know. But when you look at the last three games, you know, the San Diego State, Hawaii, and then this game, defense has played really well, you know, especially against the run. We gave up that one big one. But, I mean, to play those three weeks the way we have against the run, we know we got to get some things sorted out in the back end. But really proud for them for just sticking in. And, you know, I mean, we wouldn't have won that game had they not played as well as they did for the last three quarters. Let's uh, get to the second half now. UNLV may have put together its best 30 minutes of football of the season to capture the cannon. UNR had the ball to start the second half and worked in the UNLV territory. On fourth and six at the 42, Kalili steps in front of Ganji's pass and knocks it down. Later in the third, UNLV put together an 11 play 87 yard drive. Xavier Campbell stepped up big, going 28 yards to move the ball into Wolfpack territory at the 36. Then X marks the spot again, working his way down to the three. On second and goal from the one, Rogers rolls right and hits Noah Bean for the touchdown. UNLV had its first lead of the game at 28-26 with 4.46 left in the third. We move to the fourth. Reno got a 36-yard field goal from Ahmed to retake the lead and then got the ball back with just over nine minutes to go. They drove to the UNLV 22. The Ganji is picked off by Javen White who tacks on a big return that was called back on a hold, but the Rebels still have possession at their own 27 with 6.02 left. UNLV put together its biggest drive of the year on third and two with their own 35. The high snap, but Rogers pulls it down and moves the chains. Rogers finds Presley for 10 more to move the ball to midfield. The tank QB1 downfield to Paolo for the huge hookup to move it to the Wolfpack 12. On second and goal at the three, it's Rodgers again, lowering his shoulder and bulldozing his way into the end zone for the score. The two-point conversion failed, but the Rebels had a 34-29 lead with 2.34 left. Reno tried to put together one final drive, but it's Javen White coming up with another huge play, picking off Ganji to seal the deal. Down 23-0, the Rebels pull off the biggest comeback in school history. The sideline went nuts, and the party was on. The cannon is red once again as UNLV rallies for the 34-29 win to set off celebrations on the field and in the locker room. We just did what good old Americans do. We went back to work. That's one thing we preached on um, after we saw how the way the season was going and we seen that we couldn't get to a bowl game, we just told everybody we're going to get the cannon back. And that's, that's what we're going to start the legacy right here in this game today. And that's what it was. We went out there brought the cannon back, like we said. I walked up to them at practice and told them I was going to give them everything I had and we was going to get that cannon back no matter what. Even, even though we didn't get the season that we wanted to, we was going to finish strong. The game was bigger than me and I wanted to do it for the team and everybody around us. Man, this is a great feeling. I just I just love to get the seniors to go out with a bang, you know. The season didn't go the way we wanted, but you know, hey, the cannon is back in Vegas. Let's start with the second half in terms of the offense. And I think one of the keys was the long drives, not just touchdown drives, but you sustained some long 
time consuming drives gave the defense a little bit of a breather and, and ended up cashing in with touchdowns. Yeah, you know, again, you know, and I've said it a bunch of when you run for 200 yards, I mean, it gives you an opportunity to win the, win the game. And in the second half, we were really, really physical up front. Uh, I thought X did a great job, Evan Owens along with Lex. I mean, they ran the ball well. Armani had some good hard yards, but we were able to really kind of, it's the first time, you know, in the last couple of years, we've been more physical than them in, the, in that game, especially in the fourth quarter. So we challenged our guys all week. You know, we kind of hit their buttons about, hey, let's be physical. Um, and we were, we were just a more physical football team at the end of the game. True Rebel football fans who follow this team know Javen White, but he's going to become a household name here, I think, as he moves through the rest of his career. Two big picks, and this is a guy who can be a game changer, and he was last night. Uh, he was. I mean, he, you know, and the thing about Javen, you know, he had the flu, so for, for the, the, the two days before, the walkthrough day, he didn't really do much. We actually sent him into, in, into bed on Friday night, and he took two IVs, one in the morning and one right before the game just to get his energy level up and to go out and to play with the energy he did and make the plays that he did. I mean, that's what it's all about. You can build on stuff like that. And Javen's a great kid and really proud of him and happy for him. Set off, obviously, a, a huge celebration. You win your second cannon, only the second head coach since 1981 to win two cannons in his tenure, which is a huge accomplishment. But I think it showed off everything that this team has been through and the fact that they've never given up and, and fought. They deserve to have that celebration last yeah, night. Yeah, you know what? When, when we're healthy and we're rolling, we're a good football team. You know, we saw just, you know, again, certain things that need to be addressed in more depth. I mean, you know, there's, the secondary has been so banged up, losing our money for a big stretch, and it just takes an emotional toll on the guys. And for them to come back out, play the way they did, you know, and, and to come back in that type of fashion, so happy for the guys, so happy for our seniors. And there was only five guys that, that, that were on the field last night that played in that first you know, Cannon game, you know, my first year. So the overwhelming uh, majority of those guys all red shirts. So you got Javen White and, you know, you got Gabe McCoy and, you know, you get I mean, just a whole host of guys that are all coming back. And every year you're going to have the numbers will get bigger and bigger and bigger. The guys been in the program for four years. And they are now bought into the rivalry. They know yeah. what this means. A lot of times the knock with UNLV was maybe they don't buy in as much as the Reno guys because they recruit a lot of guys that grew up with it. Some guys here maybe that aren't local didn't grow up with it. These guys are bought in. Well, they're bought in. They're bought in. You know, I won't go into details, but they got some help too. You know, a couple of days before the game or the day before the game. You know, those. Uh, you know, our, our, our guys up north, you know, did something funny. So our guys saw it, and it was uh, it got them rolling and got them going. And the young guys immediately saw whoa, kind of woke them up to you know how, how intense it is. Uh, we are going to enjoy this cannon here on the set, but we're also going to talk a little bit about the future. Time for our first break. When we come back, we're going to talk a little bit about recruiting and what the focus will be during this offseason. Plus, we'll have an update on the Fertitta Football Complex. That's all coming back in two minutes as the Red Zone rolls off. You're watching the Fox 5 Rev Zone Sports Show, presented by R.C. Willie. Your home, your way. Now the work begins in terms of the recruiting trail. Your coaches are already out on the road recruiting. You're leaving on Monday to do that. What are the keys that you're going to focus on? I would assume a lot of it's going to be on the defensive side of the ball because you have more openings there, too. We do. Well, we return 19 guys in the two deep on offense and 16 on defense. So, you know, we're an experienced team, but we're a young team still. So that's great for the future. But we're going to have 25 to give, 25 scholarships. It'll be the first time in five years we have all 85 scholarships available and on scholarship on the field. So that'll be huge for depth-wise. But, yeah, we got guys that are already on the road right now. I hit the road on Monday. And, um, you know, we're, we're going to load up. And there's, you know, probably – 14 to 15 of, of the guys will be defensive players. And we, we talked about the, the long ball being the Achilles heel and the deep ball. Uh, you want to create some competition in that defensive backfield with guys who can make an immediate impact. Do you go the JUCO route or do you look for freshmen that are going to be guys that can maybe be a four-year player? You know, you do a little bit of both. Um, we're definitely going to bring some some older guys in. We're going to bring some, you always want to build for the future too, but at the same time, we have enough scholarships where we can bring older guys in. You know, and the one thing that, you know, it's easy to forget about is we brought in Luca Vardic last year as a JUCO safety and he ended up tearing his knee so he didn't get to play this year. Um, you got uh, Philip Hill who we also brought in and he broke his foot so he didn't get to play this year. Greg Francis, you know, hurt his shoulder, and Alex Perry ended up missing the second, you know, last probably, I guess, quarter of the season with also a shoulder. So we have a lot of guys that could have been impactful that were out. We'll get those guys back from injury, and then we'll load them up with some more guys. You also have the Fertitta Football Complex opening up during this offseason, and that is a game changer and something that you're going to be recruiting to, not only that, but the Raiders Stadium. But the complex, the most important, because the players are going to spend the most amount of their time 
there. How is that going to impact? What's the update on getting that thing opened up? Well, you know, I, I, was, I had a chance to walk through it the other day, last week, I believe, on Wednesday, and it's, uh, it's unbelievable. You see it right there on screen, but you walk inside of it, and you, get, you see the scope and the size of it. It's unbelievable. We had our, one of our first recruits up this weekend. You know, we were able to actually put a hard hat on and walk them through whole different deal rather than showing them pictures. So between that, the new football stadium, I, I think it's going to have a, a real impact in closing them recruits. When you talk about, too, the Raiders stadium deal, I mean, for, for a 17, 18-year-old kid and say you're going to play in an NFL stadium, brand new, state-of-the-art, uh, that, that's just an added thing. Obviously, the program's number one that you want to get them in on. But the little bells and whistles of the Fertitta Complex and the Raiders Stadium uh, slash UNLV Stadium is, is a big deal. There, there's no doubt. I mean, there's been no real financial investment made in UNLV football in a long, long time. I mean, we're talking 20-some-odd years, you know. So to, to be able to have these facilities to obviously attract recruits, but then when you get them, just feeding on our guys at a different level. I mean, we don't feed our guys the exact same way that teams like Boise can because of their facilities. So having that dining hall in there um, is huge. You know, the academic center in there, that, that, that's big time that, to be able to – provide those resources for our kids so that we, obviously we can recruit, you know, good players, but then also when they're here, train them, develop them, and, you know, and get them ready for life at a whole different level. We're going to take a short break away from football, and coming up next in the Red Zone, we're going to talk a little running Rebels basketball. All the highlights from Tuesday and Friday's game straight ahead. You're watching the Fox 5 Rev Zone Sports Show, presented by R.C. Willie, your home, your way. The Running Rebels had another 2-0 week with wins against Pacific and Southern Utah. A pre-Thanksgiving matchup with Pacific and the Running Rebels made it clear early they came to score. Amari Hardy drives the lane. He gets the hoop and the harm. Then Hardy gets inside and kicks it out to Shakur Joosten for the corner three. Chris Clyburn was also strong, hitting the triple here. Part of an 11-0 UNLV run in the first half. Then the defense, Joosten with the steal, the Rebs run, and Bakke Jong over to Hardy for the lay-in. The running Rebels led 49-32 at the half. UNLV picked right up where they left off in the second. Noah Rabotham nails the three. Jong knocks down the baseline jumper. Hardy with the drive and the scoop shot. And then the exclamation point, the alley-oop over to Joosten. Five running Rebels scoring in double figures, led by Clyburn with 17. Jong with 16 and Justin and Hardy with 13 as UNLV cruises to a 96 to 70 win. On Friday night, Southern Utah came to the Thomas and Mack and some familiar faces as former Run and Rebel interim head coach Todd Simon and former player Dwayne Morgan made their return to Las Vegas. Mbake Jong continues his stellar play, taking the turnover and he throws it down on the other end. Morgan was hot early as Southern Utah led for the first eight minutes. UNLV would turn it up late in the first. Amari Hardy penetrates and then dishes to Trevell Beck for the bucket in the bump. Then Bryce Hamilton knocked down a corner three as the Rebels led 36-28 at the half. Noah Rabotham gave a lift early in the second, the steal and the layup on the other end, but Southern Utah made a big run, bombing threes, while UNLV went more than six minutes without a field goal. The Thunderbirds pulled even, but the Rebs would get some breathing room late. Chris Clyburn in transition, he goes high off the glass and he gets the hoop and the harm, and Jiang all but sealed it late as he blocks a three-point attempt. UNLV shot only 38% from the field, but they moved to 4-1 with a 76-71 win. We are going to come back with more from Coach Sanchez and the Fremont Cannon, plus the Rebel Football Plays of the Week. It's right after this. You're watching the Fox 5 Reb Zone Sports Show, presented by R.C. Willie, your home, your way. Welcome back inside the Reb Zone. Coach Sanchez, myself, and the Fremont Cannon here getting ready to paint it red. That's going to happen tomorrow. It's got to be exciting to have this back in Las Vegas. Well, it is exciting, but you always need a great equipment staff to, to take care of you and do all those things. So Rocky Rutledge is another guest we have here today and told me to get some face time today for working so hard for us for so many years. So good to have Rocky here. First time we've had the Cannon in, ever inside a TV studio, I believe. So uh, nice that uh, you, you brought it out here. Rocky's the guy that has to roll that thing around. Oh yeah, it's one of those great trophies, you know, everyone says biggest, most expensive, heaviest. I'm the one who gets to deal with all that. <laughs> <laughs> it, uh, we're, we're glad to have it here uh, in the Fox 5 studios. Coach, thank you so much Appreciate uh, it. for everything that you do. Rocky, thank you. 
Best of luck this offseason. We're going to be checking in with Coach Sanchez about the recruiting stuff. We'll talk about the early signing period and keep you all up to date on the Rebel football stuff. We're going to focus on football with Coach Menzies coming up next Sunday. Thanks for joining us. Here's the Rebel Plays of the Week. Good night. Zone Sports Show was presented by RC Willie, your home, your way.